Okay, I got pocket holes in all my parts. And today is edge banding day. There's that pre-finished iron-on cherry. Got two rolls of it. Got my trimmer, my snipper, my square, my thermometer for that, that, that. Here's the deal. I got to edge band that edge on all these pieces. This is 28 and a quarter. Now, if I stand those up on my bench, I'm gonna be ironing at a high level and that ain't gonna work. I don't have a max in vice yet. That'll be a future build. So I need to figure out a way to get those off the ground where I can comfortably blah, blah. There it is, clamped to the bench with my work piece in it. Got the relief cut so I don't chip out my edge when I'm trading pieces in and out. This is the edge I'm concerned about when I'm ironing. I got the back edge of the cabinet piece on the foam on the jack stands. I can move the jack stands to accommodate the big pieces. There's my stack of drawer rails. I can put them in the pipe clamps and iron those right there. This is my snipping station for the banding. Right here, I can work on my piece and reach all my tools and my coffee. And I got my iron heating up. And it looks like it gets hotter than 300 degrees. A couple super moons ago, I was working at a cabinet shop and I was really proficient with the beam saw, edge bander, and CNC router. But for the life of me, I can't remember what the glue pot temperature was and I don't think high lob is the right setting. So I'm gonna have to get on the internet and ask the Oracle so I can dial in this iron. Okay, quick search on the web. Wood Magazine says high heat. Another site said cotton. I got it set to cotton. It's over 300 degrees. All we gotta do is heat this side and get that hot melt to loosen up and bond to that particulate board there. Careful, don't wreck it now. I'm gonna get started with the drawer rails and test out my process. I wanna show you something though. You see this finger joint right here, that zigzag line where these two pieces of wood come together? You have to watch out for that in the high-vis area, but on the drawer rail, I'm not concerned about it. And you must be thinking, Scott, why are you putting cherry edge banding on white melamine? What's the matter with you, you weirdo? Well, it's because I'm gonna have grain match cherry doors and drawer fronts. And when you look down on the reveal, I want you to see cherry. And when you play peekaboo, Cherry. Much like these walnut cabinets I made. Look, open the door, peekaboo, walnut, and melamine. Look at that, nice and clean. Blum hinges, adjustable shelves. Oh yeah, she's a beaut. Blah, 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 Scott. Can we get to the how-to part already? Sure. So what you wanna do here is you wanna cut your edge banding a little longer than your work piece. My work piece is 26. I think I cut the edge banding at 27 and a half or whatever. Now look, I'm gonna slide this back so you can see how the edge banding is a little bit wider than the peculiar board, right? That's what you wanna do. You wanna center that edge banding on there just like that so you have a little bit hanging over on each edge, okay? Once you're happy with all that, it's time to put the heat to it. Now, some people like to start in the middle and work their way out to each edge. I'm gonna start at one end and go to the other like an edge banding machine. Well, actually, the machine would start here and go that way. But I guess it depends on what side of the equator you're To get this started, I'm gonna take the iron in my right hand and touch it down and get the glue to stick. And as I move the iron across, I'm gonna use my left hand to make sure that the banding stays centered on my workpiece. Once I get that glue good and hot, I'm gonna take this piece of maple drumstick and I'm gonna press all that glue in. Now, when you're pressing the glue in, you wanna stay as flat as you can. You can roll a little bit to get a good seam, but if you go too far, you're gonna crack and splinter the tape. It's gonna make it hard to clean it up later with the trimmer. And when you get to the end, you wanna be on an angle like this, because if you dive off like that, you're gonna crack it and wreck it. Something I wanna mention about my work pieces and how they're arranged in the jigs. The finished side is facing me. That's what people are gonna see, right? So as I'm applying this tape, I'm keeping an eye on that finished edge. I wanna make sure that seam comes out really nice. When the veneer is all glued down and the glue is cured, I'll take my guillotine and snip the ends flush, and then I'll take my edge trimmer and trim off the edges nice and flush. Real quick about the seed and edge trimmer. This is your flush cutter, it has no adjustment. However, this angled cutter, you can change the depth of cut on that. And what that does is it puts a little bevel on each edge so things don't catch and splinter out your tape and it has a nice feel. And real quick about the guillotine, you can adjust those blades right there and get them to come together really tightly and that'll give you a nice clean flush cut right there on the end. Okay, I think that's it for the tools, right? Now it's time to get busy. So what I'll do is I'll sit you up on the tripod and we'll get it from a couple different angles so you can check out the process and we'll get some of those drawer rails done.
Dad, I got the drawer rails done. Look, a couple of them have these dark spots. I just left them right in there. I don't care. But look at these glue seams. Ooh, baby. Nice and clean, huh? Ends are all trimmed nice and tight. Nice little stack of parts right there. Okay, well, I got a new tee here. Got my next piece queued up. I got 28 more edges to do. I'm going to get busy. <laughs> I'd be lying to you if I told you there wasn't any file work to do. These tools work great, but you still got to touch them with a file. And I'm going to show you how quick that goes. Some guys put a little piece of tape around the end there to keep it on an angle like that. I don't bother with it with melamine. So I'm just holding it nice and flat right here. Just a couple downward shearing motions like that. This side's nice. See, that's nice and flush. So I'll just give it a little chamfer like that. See that? Boom. Around here. Do those little cuts like that. That's all you got to do. Now this side, for some reason, there's a lot of glue and there's a lot of tape. So you could um, you could clamp this down, but it goes so quick. It's not even worth busting the clamp out. So that IKEA flat pack has got you all confused, huh? Uh huh. You say customer service got you on hold, huh? Starting to get irate, huh? Look here, I call this Shirley Temple. There you go. That's all the cabinet parts right there, except for the backs and the doors and drawer fronts. Okay, the backs are over here. I gotta cut them out of that stuff. And, uh, but there they are. There it all is. Cherry edge banding, iron on. So if you don't know what I'm building, this is what it is. And you can check out some previous videos of mine and you can watch this whole process get to this point. 